So let's start. Number 10, the Nazca Lines. In the deserts of Peru lie the Nazca Lines, enormous geoglyphs carved into the ground, stretching across miles of barren landscape. Some are simple shapes like spirals and straight paths, others are massive figures, a monkey, a hummingbird, a spider, even something that looks like an astronaut with a round head and raised hand. The catch? They can only be seen properly from above. The Nazca people made them between 500 BCE and 500 CE, but why is still unclear. Some scholars think they were offerings to the gods, huge prayers for water in the desert. Others argue they were astronomical markers, calendars etched into the earth, but that doesn't explain why some are so artistic, or why they include animals that had no obvious connection to desert survival. What's baffling is how they managed the scale without aerial views. Did they have advanced surveying methods with ropes and stakes? Did they build observation towers? Or did they even experiment with primitive hot air balloons to check their work? We don't have solid answers. What we do know is that creating them would have taken enormous effort, coordination, and cultural meaning, none of which was written down. And then there are the fringe theories, alien landing strips, interstellar messages, signals to the sky. Archaeologists dismiss those ideas, but the truth is, we still don't really know. What's certain is that the Nazca Lines remain one of history's most stunning mysteries, proof that ancient people could create works so vast and strange that we're still squinting at them centuries later, wondering what message we've missed. Number 9. The Baghdad Battery in the 1930s, archaeologists near Baghdad uncovered a small clay jar with a copper cylinder and an iron rod inside. At first glance, it looked like a simple storage vessel, but when scientists reconstructed it, they realized it could have worked like a primitive battery, generating a tiny electric charge when filled with an acidic liquid like vinegar or lemon juice. If true, that would mean people in ancient Mesopotamia had stumbled upon electricity around 2,000 years before Benjamin Franklin flew his kite. The jar wouldn't have powered light bulbs, but it could have been used for electroplating jewelry, shocking people in rituals, or just as a scientific curiosity. The fact that the concept existed at all long before the scientific method is what makes it so bizarre. Skeptics argue it might not have been a battery at all. Some say it was just a storage container for scrolls or religious texts, but experiments show that with the right liquid, it definitely produces a measurable current. And since multiple jars have been found, it suggests this wasn't an accident. Somebody knew how to make them. The real mystery is context. Why would ancient craftsmen need electricity? If they used it for plating gold onto objects, that means they weren't just experimenting. They were applying practical chemistry centuries before it should have existed. Whether it was an early science experiment or just a misunderstood artifact, the Baghdad battery forces us to wonder how much ancient knowledge slipped through the cracks of history. Number 8. The Tunguska Event on June 30th, 1908, something exploded over the Siberian wilderness with the force of 1,000 Hiroshima bombs. The blast flattened 800 square miles of forest, around 80 million trees knocked down like matchsticks, but left no crater. Eyewitnesses reported a fireball racing across the sky, followed by shockwaves that shattered windows hundreds of miles away. Scientists eventually concluded it was likely an asteroid or comet fragment that exploded in the atmosphere before hitting the ground. But because of the remote location, no one investigated for decades, and by then, all they had were scorched trees and survivor stories. No meteorite fragments were ever conclusively found, and the exact cause is still debated. Some theories suggest it was a stony asteroid that disintegrated midair. Others say it was a comet made of ice that left little trace. Fringe explanations have ranged from a volcanic gas explosion to, of course, alien technology. What makes Tunguska so eerie is that it's a disaster that should have left obvious geological evidence but instead, it feels like an enormous vanishing act. If Tunguska had happened just a few hours later, the blast would have leveled St. Petersburg, killing hundreds of thousands. Instead, it hit one of the emptiest spots on Earth. To this day, scientists study the event not just to understand what happened, but to prepare for the future. Because Tunguska isn't just history, it's a reminder that the Earth is still vulnerable to cosmic roulette. Number 7. 
the Dancing Plague of 1518. In the summer of 1518, the city of Strasbourg, then part of the Holy Roman Empire, experienced one of history's strangest medical mysteries. A woman named Frau Trophea walked into the street and began dancing uncontrollably. She didn't stop for hours. Soon, dozens joined her, moving and twitching as if in a trance. Within weeks, hundreds of people were dancing, some for days on end until they collapsed from exhaustion, injury, or even death. At first, the authorities thought it was possession or a curse. Instead of stopping the dancers, they made it worse. They built stages and even hired musicians, thinking the dancers would dance it out of their system. Instead, the crowd grew larger and more frenzied. Chroniclers describe people foaming at the mouth, breaking ribs, and begging for relief while their bodies refused to stop. Historians today still don't have a clear answer. Some think it was mass hysteria brought on by stress, famine, and disease. Others suggest it was ergot poisoning, a mold on rye bread that produces hallucinogens similar to LSD. But neither explanation fully accounts for the sheer scale and duration of the outbreak. The Dancing Plague wasn't just a medical oddity, it was a social disaster. Entire families were caught in it, communities were disrupted, and priests performed exorcisms in desperation. Whatever triggered it, it shows just how fragile the line is between collective psychology and physical reality. Strasbourg learned the hard way that when humans panic in unison, the results can be as deadly as any plague. Number six, the mystery of dark matter. Right now, everything you can see, stars, planets, galaxies, you, me, makes up less than 5% of the universe. The rest is invisible. About 27% is what we call dark matter, and 68% is dark energy. Dark matter doesn't emit light, doesn't reflect it, doesn't interact with it, and yet it exerts gravity. Without it, galaxies would fly apart like broken pinwheels. Scientists only discovered it in the 20th century when they realized stars on the edges of galaxies were moving way too fast. Something unseen was pulling them in, like an invisible glue, the math didn't add up without an enormous hidden source of mass. That invisible mass became known as dark matter. Here's the bizarre part. Despite decades of searching, no one knows what dark matter actually is. It could be made of exotic particles we haven't discovered, primordial black holes, or something entirely outside our current physics. Entire experiments have been built underground, shielded from cosmic rays just to detect a single interaction. The weirdness goes deeper. If dark matter makes up a quarter of the universe, it means we don't actually know the composition of most of reality. Imagine if you opened your fridge and discovered that 95% of its contents were invisible, untouchable, but still shaped how everything else inside behaved. That's where science stands with the cosmos. Dark matter is the ultimate cosmic riddle, one that redefines how much we don't know about the universe we live in. Number five the wow signal. On August 15th, 1977, astronomer Jerry Amon was scanning the skies with Ohio State University's Big Ear Radio Telescope when he noticed something unusual, a powerful narrowband radio signal coming from the constellation Sagittarius. It lasted for 72 seconds and was so striking that he circled the printout in red and wrote wow in the margin. That scribble became the name of one of the most tantalizing mysteries in the search for extraterrestrial life. The signal was exactly the kind researchers hoped for, strong, specific, and unlikely to be natural background noise, but when they turned the telescope back, the signal was gone. It has never been detected again, despite decades of follow-up searches. For many, the wow signal remains the closest humanity has ever come to receiving a hello from the stars. Explanations range from the mundane to the extraordinary. Some say it was a passing comet, though later studies dispute that. Others argue it might have been a secret military transmission bouncing around the ionosphere. And of course, there's the thrilling possibility. It was an intentional broadcast from another civilization. What makes the wow signal so haunting is its uniqueness. In science, reproducibility is everything. You need to see the same effect again and again, to be sure, but the universe doesn't always cooperate. The wow signal sits in that frustrating limbo. Not enough evidence to confirm aliens, but too weird to dismiss. For now, it remains a cosmic question mark. 
a single strange whisper from the deep night sky. Number four, the Taos hum. In the small town of Taos, New Mexico, residents began reporting something strange in the early 1990s, a low droning hum that seemed to come from nowhere. Only about 2% of the population claimed to hear it, but for those who did, it was maddening. Imagine a constant, idling diesel engine that never shuts off day or night. The sound wasn't recorded clearly by microphones, and visitors often couldn't hear it at all, making it one of the most frustrating scientific mysteries out there. Scientists investigated everything from high-voltage power lines to underground seismic activity, even possible secret military projects. None of the theories fully explained why only a small portion of people could hear it. Some researchers suggested it was a case of low-frequency hearing sensitivity, where certain individuals' ears pick up sounds others simply can't. But that doesn't explain why the hum is localized to Taos and a handful of other hum hotspots around the world. Some people driven crazy by the noise even moved out of town entirely. Others described symptoms like headaches, dizziness, and insomnia, all seemingly tied to the mysterious vibration. Conspiracy-minded locals claimed it was a government mind-control experiment gone wrong, while more imaginative theories suggested it could be linked to tectonic shifts deep underground, or even the Earth itself, singing. To this day, the Taos hum remains unsolved. No definitive source has ever been found, and those who hear it are left questioning whether the noise is real or if it's something wired into their own brains. Either way, it's a reminder that sound, one of the simplest things in our environment, can still hide baffling secrets. Number three, the Devil's Kettle Waterfall. In Minnesota's Judge C.R. Magney State Park, there's a waterfall that has been confusing scientists and visitors for decades. The Brule River splits into two streams. One side flows normally, tumbling down the rocks, the other side plunges into a giant hole called the Devil's Kettle and then vanishes. The water doesn't reappear downstream, it doesn't bubble up nearby, it just disappears into the earth like a magic trick. Naturally, people tried everything to figure out where it goes. Scientists and curious locals dumped dye into the water, hoping to see it re-emerge somewhere downstream. Nothing. They tossed in ping pong balls, logs, and even GPS trackers. Still nothing. It was as if the earth itself swallowed the river whole. For years, wild theories spread. Some claimed it was a direct tunnel to the center of the earth. Others thought it drained into a massive underground cave system, or even resurfaced miles away in Lake Superior. The most ridiculous suggestion? That it might flow into another dimension entirely. In 2016, geologists did a more careful study and concluded that the missing water probably just rejoins the river through hidden cracks in the rock. But since no one has actually seen the water come out, the Devil's Kettle keeps its aura of mystery. To this day, visitors still toss in objects hoping to solve the puzzle. Most never come back out. Number two, the Voynich Manuscript. The Voynich Manuscript is often called the world's most mysterious book, and for good reason. Found in 1912 by a rare book dealer, it's a 240-page codex written in a script no one can read. The letters don't belong to any known alphabet, yet they follow patterns too consistent to be random. It's like someone invented an entire language, like one we've never seen before or since. The illustrations don't help much either, they show strange plants that don't exist, odd astronomical diagrams, and even pages of nude women bathing in green liquid flowing through pipe-like systems. It's as if someone tried to explain a world that isn't ours. Cryptographers from World War II, AI programs, and professional linguists have all tried to crack it. Nothing. The book stubbornly refuses to give up its secrets. Some say it's a hoax, a medieval trick to scam a rich buyer. But if that's true, it's an insanely elaborate one. Why invent a whole language just to trick someone? Others think it was the work of an alchemist or mystic trying to encode hidden knowledge. A few have even suggested it's the product of glossolalia, automatic writing from trances. And of course, there are those who whisper that maybe it's not even human in origin. Carbon dating places it in the early 1400s, meaning this mystery has been mocking us for six centuries. Every page feels like it's trying to tell us something crucial about medicine, astronomy, or maybe even philosophy. But until someone cracks it, the Voynich manuscript will remain the most frustrating riddle in book form. Dangling meaning just out of reach. Number one, 
The Antikythera Mechanism In 1901, sponge divers off a small Greek island found what looked like a lump of bronze junk. Decades later, researchers realized it was something extraordinary, a device now known as the Antikythera Mechanism. Inside that corroded box were gears so precise they could model the movements of the sun, moon, and planets. Many call it the world's first computer. By turning a crank, the user could predict eclipses, track lunar cycles, and even mark the dates of the ancient Olympic Games. It was built more than 2,000 years ago, yet its complexity wasn't matched until medieval clockmakers, over a thousand years later. This wasn't just a calendar, it was a portable planetarium. The real puzzle is who built it and how the knowledge behind it vanished. Ancient texts hint at machines that could model the heavens, but nothing else from the period shows this level of engineering. If Greek scientists had this technology, why don't we see more devices like it? Was this a one-of-a-kind masterpiece, or evidence of a lost tradition of advanced craftsmanship? Today, x-ray scans reveal tiny inscriptions explaining how it worked. Almost like an instruction manual carved in bronze, they show it once had at least 37 gears, maybe more. But instead of being preserved, the device sank with its ship, and its genius was forgotten for centuries. The Antikythera mechanism is proof that ancient people sometimes reach levels of brilliance we can't fully explain, leaving behind a single, broken artifact that feels more like science fiction than archaeology. Thank you for watching and sticking till the end. We've got plenty more videos coming in the future. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss them. See you in the next one.